Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new machine quilting tutorial. Today I want to teach you how to quilt paisley. This is a beautiful teardrop shaped design. It creates an excellent texture for your quilts. So we're going to break down the rules of the design first, learn how to quilt it on a small baby quilt on a home machine, and then I'm going to switch over to the long arm and see if I can quilt this on my new long arm. I'm just learning how to get into this. It's probably not going to be all that pretty. <laughs> so let's learn how to quilt this together. So let's start with the rules of Paisley. We're going to begin with a long teardrop shape. And I'm going to come all the way back to my starting point. And this is a good point if you know you're feeling a little uncomfortable, your quilt doesn't feel quite right, that's a good point to just stop with the needle in the down position, shift things around, get it into a position that feels more comfortable. Any time that you have an overlap or a point like that, that's a good time to stop and shift things around. Now the next step of this design, the next rule, is to pivot, that means change direction, and swing all the way around that shape with an echo. And now I'm going to narrow that down and come back to my starting point. Uh, so that way we're kind of tapering. We're bringing those lines closer together, that starting point, but widening them out to fit our scale. And so that's about a half inch between those lines of quilting that will make my quilt nice and soft. So now I'm going to swing around and you can pivot and echo as many times as you want. The more echoes that you add to your quilt and around your paisley shapes, then the more of that kind of echoing texture you're going to get, the more, the fewer the echoes, then the more of this kind of slightly denser, more intense texture you're going to get because you're going to have, of course, more travel stitching. Okay, I've got a little weird area, so I'm just going to come up here with basically kind of a nice curving shape. And that kind of looks like Paisley would look if it was cut off. You can kind of tell, you can put your hand over the design and see what it would look like if it was slightly cut off. Now I'll travel stitch up and I'll come down for an echo, just like that. And you're gonna have to figure out ways of, of fitting into strange areas. And the best thing to do is just stitch the design a few times as a whole shape and then put your hand on top of it and see what it looks like whenever it's cut in half or you only have a little sliver of it showing. And that's what you're going to use in those weird areas of the quilt, anywhere that you just can't fit a whole shape of the design. Okay, so teardrop shape again. Swing out and around and come around for that echo. Now I've been pivoting and echoing basically in the same direction, but please know that you can go in either direction. It doesn't matter. Here I will stitch a small one and show you that you can pivot and echo in any direction you want to. So this time I'm going to bounce from this side and I put my foot down a little bit and speed up. And then now I'm going to go all the way through and pivot from that same direction again. You can add more travel stitching. You know, you can really intensify that the more times you stitch over it. It's like using bold when you're writing. Uh, it just adds extra emphasis. It's extra layers of thread. And no, that's not bad for your quilt. I do it all the time. Uh, especially if I'm wanting to add extra emphasis, uh, if I really want that design to stand out on the surface and I'm contrasting thread, then I might travel stitch over an area intentionally several times. And that's just part of the design. It makes it pretty. And uh, it really makes your quilt stand out. But you know, sometimes we don't want that. Sometimes we want less travel stitching, or maybe that might be uh, a challenge for you to do. Please understand it doesn't matter which way you stitch it, you can try and avoid some travel stitching. So here I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna avoid some travel stitching by just hitting right up against that other paisley shape right there, and that's fine too. So understand there's many ways of quilting it, but the rules of the design are really the key to understanding it. Make that teardrop shape, return to that starting point, pivot and echo around it. Got a little weird area. Go on ahead and fill that in. Now I'm going to work through and pivot around this side. That way it stays nice and consistent. And this is one of those designs that you can absolutely travel stitch your way out of anywhere. You'll never get stuck in it because you can always use travel stitching to escape through the design. Whether it's travel stitching on the edge of a paisley shape, you know, just the outer edge, or it's travel, travel stitching in the ditch, or just around the outline of whatever you're quilting. 
Okay, so I hope you can see I quilted a row of this design right across my quilt. Now I'm gonna cut angle down and bring a row in down here. And this is the way that I like to quilt in rows. It just works for my brain. It's kind of like exactly like writing on paper. Uh, you know, we fill in a piece of paper in rows so that way uh, it fills in completely and consistently and we don't you know, start in the middle of the page and work out and branch out in all different directions. You know, that would be really hard to read. <laughs> so uh, I really like quilting in rows because it makes sense for my brain. And so as I stitch the next row, really what I'm doing, I'm thinking about is kind of interlocking these shapes with the shapes that I've quilted before. So that might mean a little bit of travel stitching or just brushing up against a previous Paisley shape, like just there. I just brushed her up right up against it and then I'll come back around. Actually, I'll go on ahead and form a shape going in this direction. Now my stitches are getting just ever so slightly long. You might notice that they're fluctuating. I do not have a stitch regulator, so the size and shape of my stitches on my home machine are entirely created by my hands and the speed of the machine. So my stitches are big, that means my hands are moving fast, but my machine is not running fast enough to keep up with them. So I can do two things. I can slow down my hands consciously, but leave my machine running the same speed. And look at that, my stitches get nice and small again. Now I could also speed up my machine by, and leave my hands moving at the same rate. That causes a little vibration, so I might not wanna do that for video, but a lot of times I'll just put my foot down and speed up, and that will shrink down my stitches too. Sometimes it just takes a little bit more focus and concentration to really slow down your hands, especially when it feels like a natural movement to be made. And I gotta say, this is something, your stitch length is gonna be something that takes time, it takes practice to build. It's not gonna be something that happens immediately. And you're gonna have wild stitches. You're gonna have big chunky stitches, big stitches, little stitches, all kinds. Uh, and it's just like riding a bike. You're just gonna have to learn how to balance those stitches by balancing that ratio of how fast your needle is going up and down and how fast your hands are moving the quilt. It's a ratio with free motion quilting and it doesn't matter what the settings are on your machine because your machine is really not doing the work here. It's just your hand pushing, your hands pushing and your foot pressing down on the foot pedal. Okay, so I've got one little space here. I hope you can see how I'm just interlocking these two rows together and that creates a beautiful texture over the surface of the quilt and it fills in nicely. And you can see we don't have any big gaps or you know wide spaces within the design. It's very consistently filled and has that nice texture. If you wanted to, you could go in here and stitch some little curving lines if you really wanted to be picky about it, but honestly, that looks great. So that's a good little practice for Paisley. Definitely give this a try. We're gonna switch over to a real baby quilt and try it again there. So I've shifted a small baby quilt into the arm of my machine and I'm quilting some Paisley on top. So it's that same rule of the design, nice teardrop shape, come all the way back, then pivot and echo around it and widen those echoes so you have a nice distance between those two shapes. And really that's your quilting scale. That's gonna determine how soft your quilt feels when it's done. And this is a baby quilt. I want it to be nice and soft and cuddly. And, but you know, there's one other thing that can determine how your quilt feels when it's finished and that is the batting. So if that's something that's confusing to you, definitely take my workshop, Basting Basics, and you can learn a lot more about picking the right quilt batting for any particular project and you know, basically picking the batting based on how much quilting you wanna do so you can get your quilts done really quickly. So now I'm travel stitching carefully. This is one of those designs you really should have your stitching in the ditch completed so that before you start quilting the space so you can use those ditches to travel stitch along. And please ignore this white thread here stitched in straight lines across. That's just my basting lines. I basted with water soluble thread on this quilt. And that's another thing you can learn in that Basting Basics workshop. I teach you how to do that. It's a great way of basting a quilt so that you don't have any pens in it, which makes it so much easier to quilt on your home machine. So there we go. Now I have 
two choices. You know, anytime that you're quilting, you might be faced with a lot of choices as you go. Should I come down with another echo and branch out with another paisley shape here? Or should I branch out with a paisley shape right here? And really there's no right or wrong answer. It's just about what you feel like stitching. And I feel like stitching a nice long teardrop shape right in this area. I'm gonna come all the way back, pivot and echo. And notice how slow I'm moving. If I swung this out really, really fast, I'd have to be running my machine at a really fast speed. And honestly, I don't think that I could really push it that easily because I have minky fabric on the back of this quilt. This is some black minky here, and it is really grippy. It, uh, it has a plush pile, and all those little fibers really like to grip the surface of the machine. So I feel like this is the fastest that I can move this quilt around. And so I'm just trying to balance that speed with the speed of my machine. So I'm not running my machine very fast either. And that's producing these nice, tight, consistent stitches. So I have this little weird area here. So I'm gonna swing around and fill that in completely. So I don't have to sneak back in there later. And this is really down to just memorizing the design. I, I think of it kind of like a relationship. <laughs> the more you get to know a design, you know, go out on dates with it. <laughs> uh, the more you take it out to dinner and stitch it on your quilts, then the better you know one another and the more you're likely to like the design and to be able to use it in your quilts in lots of different places. So yeah, you really just need more experience and think of it like a relationship. The more you quilt the design, the easier it's gonna get, and the better you're gonna know how to fit and fill it into any particular space. So I'm quilting this. I know that it's gonna work great to stitch it in this row right across this block. So that's how I'm filling it into this area. I have a couple choices here as I have this little corner that's a little weird. And it's a little hard to see because this is right behind my foot. I can't really see that, but I know that the rule of the design is just to come up with that teardrop shape. So that's what I'm gonna start with. And that kind of filled in that area pretty nicely. And then now I'll bounce and echo to fill it in the rest of the way. And I've got some strange gaps here. I'm gonna do some travel stitching in the ditch and I've got some strange gaps. So what I'm gonna do is just bounce against that other paisley shape and bounce back against the ditch. Now there would be a lot of stitching in the ditch to come all the way around and back through to here. So I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna travel stitch over just a little bit and swing in for another little echo. That's perfectly fine. I might've brought my lines just a little closer together right there, but that's okay. It saved me a whole lot of slow, careful stitching in the ditch, which would be a little tedious. And here's another choice. I could stitch all the way around and down in the ditch or I could just simply travel stitch a bit and kind of come up with a little curve and then maybe even bounce back and do another little curve. It's a little bit, um, you know, the lines are a little closer together, sure. That's a little bit of a cheat uh, because those lines are closer together, but it certainly made that area faster and easier to escape from with less stitching in the ditch. Stitching in the ditch, it's just a little bit time consuming. You really have to slow down and think about it and you know you can do it in free motion absolutely i stitch these stitches with free motion quilting but it just takes a lot of focus and concentration notice how much i'm slowing down here as i stitch right through that ditch but it's not impossible and it's certainly not against the rules you absolutely do that i have to do it a lot just to travel through make sure that i fill in the design evenly and consistently within my quilt there we go so we've got a nice row and it kind of fills in those two yellow and orange blocks. Now I can kind of swing down and start my next row and start angling it out in the other direction. And this is how I like to fill just about everything. It just makes sense for my brain. I can interlock those rows together and it fills consistently. I say that word a lot, uh, you know, consistency, and just from a distance, you can look at your quilt and you don't have you know, big chunky shapes right next to itsy bitsy tiny shapes. It all looks like it was evenly quilted and I really like that. 
Now you might notice my fabric's just shifting ever so slightly around my stitch in the dish lines. I don't think that's gonna be an issue. Those lines are gonna wash out completely. Sorry, stitch in the dish lines. Basting lines, those are my basting lines. So little pleats like that, it's just stitching right over my uh, basting, my water soluble thread basting. It can be a little bit tricky. I think a lot of that has to do with my minky backing and I've got kind of a fluffy batting in the middle and that might be causing a lot of that. But after that thread has washed out completely after the quilt is finished, it's not gonna be an issue. And those little fold overs that you sometimes see, they're gonna come out in the wash. They're gonna kind of, everything will kind of, um, even out, that's the best way of saying it. So there we go, that's looking good. But I feel like I'm getting too far into this corner, so I'm gonna push the quilt around and rotate it, and that way I can kind of start working my way through this area. Well, there's always more than one choice. I actually think I'm gonna go on ahead and fill up to that corner all the way through instead. This is one of those things. There's no right or wrong way to fill any quilt. And I've kind of made an L shape through this block and that's a-okay. No right or wrong way of doing it. The one thing I don't wanna do is I don't wanna stitch this block where I leave a big open gap here right in the center because that could be real pleaty and puckery if I left extra baggy fabric right in the center and didn't stitch that till the very, very end. That's something to watch out for. So I'm gonna make sure that as I form my next shapes, I'm really gonna be aiming for that area so I can kind of work my way down and into that middle so that can be knocked out too. So here I'll swing around. My stitches are getting just a little bit wide. I think I've been pushing the quilt just a little bit more and moving it a little faster, I either need to slow down my hands again or speed up my machine, one or the other. If you do both, because it's a balancing ratio, if you do both things at once, if you both uh, sped up your machine and slowed down your hands, then your stitches would remain the same size. <laughs> it's one of those funny things about free motion quilting. It really can um, kind of uh, manipulate your brain a little bit just thinking about it. Uh, and trying to get those stitches to change, sometimes you really have to think about what you're doing and make sure that you're not, you know, when you slow down your hands, you're not also slowing down your machine too, which can also change your stitches. So here you can see, I am stitching a few smaller paisley shapes here just to fit it into that area and work my way into that center. And that's okay. You can vary your scale. You know, you can have some shapes be smaller and sometimes they can change the design and it can look really pretty. You know, you could have a really big paisley shape and then stitch little paisleys all around it. That would certainly be something interesting to see. You just have to play with it and see what's gonna work best for you. So there we go. I think with this one, I'm gonna have the center section knocked out, interlock this one with the row before it, and I'll just continue working through this block, stitching those shapes throughout until that entire space is filled. So now I've moved inside the house and I wanna try Paisley on my long arm. This is the Grace Cunique 14 Plus. It's been recently renamed to the 15R and that means it has a stitch regulator and that keeps my stitches all the same size. And I have my machine set to 16 stitches per inch. Now the, the video that you just saw on my home sewing machine, I do not have a stitch regulator on my home sewing machine. That is just my hands moving the quilt and my foot pressing the foot pedal. Uh, so it's a little bit different between the two machines. And I have to say, the stitch regulator definitely makes it easier to get stitches that are all the same size. So we're gonna get started with those rules of Paisley, really simple design, teardrop shape. Come back to your starting point. You see how much I slow down right there. Now I'm gonna come out and swing around for that echo and come back to my starting point again. I'm gonna try not to overlap too badly here. Try just to travel stitch. See how much I'm slowing down, just so I can keep that nice and clean. Now I'll swing out for a teardrop shape going right here, and then come back and swing out again. I'm not gonna worry about those gaps between Paisley and that pebbling I stitched before. It's not a very big gap. 
uh, and it would be really hard for me to fill that right now cleanly. So I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave those little gaps there. I think that looks fine. There we go. Now swing out this way. And I have to say, the key to this, the reason why I know how to quilt it kind of so smoothly and I'm having a pretty good time with this is because I've memorized those rules of the design. You know, that I know exactly how this, the shapes are formed and how they come together. And then I have an intuitive feel for how many echoes, how many times to bounce around it. You know, that just feels like that one needed three right there. And here I'll come up with another shape kind of filling in this space. So it doesn't matter what machine that you learn on, the design and practice that you get, the muscle memory that you get from stitching the design, whether it's on a home sewing machine or on a long arm, it's gonna translate to any machine because really this is just about memorization. This is just about getting to know those lines of the design and how they come together and then building that skill to do things like travel stitching and echoing cleanly and moving the machine so you know it's smooth movement and doesn't wobble. Here I'm gonna swing all the way around. You can see how much I speed up there and come to that point. And then now I will swing out this way. So all that's down to just memorizing the rules of the design and then having the experience of quilting it in a lot of different quilts. And this is one of my favorite designs. I've quilted it a whole lot over the years uh, and I have several videos on it. So if you're feeling like, okay, I kind of get it, but you want just a little bit more instructions, I'll make sure to link up all those videos I've done over the years so you can learn more about it. And it's really just a matter of just looking for those gaps, saying, okay, that's where I wanna go, swing out, and then come back in. And then it's also about scale, too. There's about a one inch, you know, half inch. You, I can put my thumb in there, that's about a half inch wide. And then I'm gonna swing out and try and make my echo a half inch wide. And that's all about scale, of widening the distance between those lines of quilting so that way your quilt ends up soft. Now, if you're building skill and your aim is to get good, whoop, swung out real fast there. Kind of kind of made that a little bit of a strange shape, but we'll get it back under control here. But if you really want to build your skill quickly and you really want to get the most bang for your buck and use the least amount of fabric, a lot of people call this wasting fabric. I don't think it's a waste, but still, it's kind of the perception then the best way to really learn this and learn it quickly with the least amount of fabric is to quilt small. When you bring those lines of quilting together, you get more repetitions for the amount of space that you're quilting. So you repeat those shapes, you repeat those movements more in a smaller amount of space. And that means you're gonna build your skill that much faster and you're gonna use up less fabric. You're gonna quilt less messy and less quilt. <laughs> But it is going to be messy. As you can see, I'm still struggling to get control over this machine. And I'm trying to make myself quilt on it at least 10 to 20 minutes every day. That's really the key. You're not going to get good unless you make yourself do it, unless you just deal with those ugly stitches that are going to come. It's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. Now, I got to say, I do have a cheat for this design in particular. And I came up with this. I was quilting a quilt for a friend and I needed it done really quickly and I just did not have time to you know agonize about the travel stitching and my stitching not being perfect so I started doing what I call a paisley shortcut so this is a different design and I've only really done this on the long arm I haven't tried this out on my home sewing machine yet so it's a fun design basically it's the same idea teardrop shape swing around an echo but you can see we're not connecting Instead, I come down with a point close to it and pivot and change direction, but we're not gonna connect to anything else. And I'm just gonna kind of zoom through here, kind of with an echo, but I'm not gonna touch anything else. There's gonna be no travel stitching, no hitting points. And that makes this design a lot easier, the shortcut version, because you don't have to worry about hitting anything. Here, I'm gonna swing around. And sometimes you're gonna have to make up what to do. You know, you're gonna have to shrink it down just a bit and swing around. That looks good. Now I think I'll kind of stretch this one over in this direction. And I'll admit, I had trouble 
you know, when I was on a home sewing machine, I really needed those points to connect. I really needed to see a teardrop shape and I needed to have that, that pivot point and come all the way down and hit that. On a long arm, I, because I can see the entire design, I find that I don't need that quite so much or maybe it's just the experience that I have with Paisley now and the experience with quilting the design that I don't get lost in it. So here I'm swinging around and I know I'm gonna come around one more time so that way I can continue working the design in this row this way. Now this little bit right here, that was because I, uh, I hit the, the end of my machine hit the rail and that caused that kind of more or less straight line <laughs> right there. So you have to watch how much space you have in your frame. I don't have quite as much space as you could have, you know, with a bigger machine, you can have a lot more space. Uh, I have about 15 inches within the arm of the machine. And some of that is taken up by the rails too. So you kind of have to keep that in mind and be mindful about where, you know, where your limit is and how much space you have to quilt inside of. So here I'm gonna come out and swing around again. And then now I'm gonna sneak out just like a, it, this is really great for practicing echoing. Oh, that looked good. I, I, you know, whenever I do something really nice and it, and it just is smooth, I always have to pat myself on the back because that one did look good. There we go, that's looking better. So I hope you can see that even if you can't quilt the Paisley where the you know points connected and that just is ending up really messy, you can break the rules, you can change the design, you can make it a shortcut, avoid hitting those points, just focus on your echo quilting, just focus on those smooth curving shapes that's still building good skill. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot quilting paisley on a home sewing machine and on a long arm with me today. As you can see, this is a design that just requires some practice and memorization, getting those rules down. And then of course, experience. Experience is number one, quilting it on real quilts, even when it looks messy, even when it's not perfect, that is the key. And you have to be willing to spend out, you know, to risk your quilt by quilting something that might not be as clean and perfect as you like. I quilted this Paisley shortcut design over a real quilt. It was the first one that I completed on the long arm and I gave it to my good friend. And it was a little scary, you know? I mean, I was making it for her. I wanted the quilt to be special and that quilting was absolutely not perfect. But I put minky fabric on the back. That was one cheat. It kind of hit a lot of the mistakes on the back of the quilt. Uh, I did match my thread pretty closely on that quilt too. And that hit a lot of mistakes as well. I contrasted just enough so I could see what I was doing, but not so much that my mistakes were really obvious. So I hope that you will give this a try and please understand that everyone has ugly stitches going into it, whether you're quilting on a home machine or you're quilting on a long arm. This takes practice and it's fun. So challenge yourself to learn this, to practice, to experiment at least 10 to 20 minutes every day and you're gonna see enormous improvement in your quilting ability. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the machine that I'm quilting on, this is the Grace Cunique 14 Plus. It's got a new name just recently and that's now the 15R, which means it has a stitch regulator and that is what keeps my stitches all looking the same size and shape. Now on my home machine, I don't have a stitch regulator. That's just my hands moving and my foot on the foot pedal. But on the long arm, I do think a stitch regulator definitely makes it a lot easier. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this machine, you can check it out at leahday.com slash grace. And if you're interested in picking up a machine or a frame like the continuum frame I'm working on here, you can learn more by calling Grace Company and make sure to mention Leah Day said, hello, my quilting friends, and they'll give you a nice discount on your order. That helps me out a bit and it helps you out too. So I hope that you'll contact Grace Company and learn more. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel on YouTube so you don't miss the next video coming out soon. Until next time, let's go quilt.